Turn with me to John. <laughs> People say, well, you don't, you don't never preach out of nothing but Paul. I'm going to read a verse out of John. So. <clears throat> In John chapter 13. Watch out for the number 13 in the book of King James Bible. <laughs> Not a good number. It's a number of rebellion. Uh, like Judas Iscariot, there's 13 letters in his name. <laughs> 13, not a... You ever notice an elevator floor? You don't have a 13th floor in a, you know, big old building? <laughs> 13. Say so you're superstitious. No, superstition is a religion. I'm not superstitious. I pick up a penny. I don't care whether it's on the head side or the tail side. That's just a penny to me. I don't worry about walking under ladders. I usually just walk them. That might be why I have bad luck all the time. <laughs> Maybe I need to be. But anyway. John chapter 13, notice in verse 20. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Now, do you believe that? Do you know the religious system don't believe that verse? They... Who did Jesus Christ send to you? Uh, look in Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Acts 26. Paul on the road to Damascus. Verse he asked him, who, verse 13, At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, You know, I always think about when he says, Who art thou, Lord? He's probably in the back of his mind saying, Don't be Jesus. <laughs> Don't be Jesus. <laughs> and he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutors. But arise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of the things which thou hast seen, and those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people. Now watch it and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Jesus Christ sent the Apostle Paul to the Gentiles. Now the verse in John says, Whosoever receiveth him that, sent, that I send receiveth me. Right? I mean, if we receive Paul as being sent from the Lord to us, then we receive Christ as though Christ came unto the Lord, us. Right or wrong, I mean, all right, notice some things about it. Turn to 1 Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. <clears throat> when Paul talks about being the apostle of the Gentiles, and he says over there in Romans chapter 11, verse 13, he said, For I speak unto you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I am. He's the only one that the Lord sent 
to the Gentiles. Now you got to think about that. He sent the 12, 12 men to the nation Israel, but he sent one man to all the Gentiles. They can't be together. There are 12 tribes of Israel. There are 12 apostles to the nation Israel, but to all the other world. He sent one man. And with that one man, the message of salvation to all the world, both Jew and Greek. Only one. That's unity. <clears throat> now look in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the, what? Gospel. Well then that, that's got to be Paul's gospel. He said, verse 16, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. He's begging, he's pleading with them to be followers of him. Why? He has the words of eternal life. It's like, well, look back. Uh, that, there's no need. Jesus, Peter said, thou to the Lord. He, he asked him, he said, will you turn away? And he said, where shall we turn? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Jesus Christ had the words to the twelve for eternal life. Paul has the words of eternal life for all the world today. There's nobody can be saved today without the message of Paul. Look in chapter 11. In chapter 11, verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of who? Christ. Look in chapter 14. Uh, chapter 14, verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Then Paul was given commandments. Paul was given the Word of God. Paul was given the words of eternal life. Paul was given your inheritance and he revealed it unto you. All that you have all that you're going to have in Christ is wrote down by the Apostle Paul, and yet he's the least read of any writer in the New Testament. You don't hear many messages coming from Paul. You don't hear Pauline doctrine taught in churches today. You have Peter, James, and John. You have all of the, most of them is out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Why? Better preaching in them books. I've had them to tell me that I didn't need to preach doctrine. Isn't that something? Look in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking, what? In me, which to you it is not weak, but is mighty in you. In other words, they, were, they didn't believe that Christ was speaking through Paul. And he said, since ye seek proof, a proof of Christ seeking it, they wanted Paul to prove it to them. He'd already proved it to them. Look back in the chapter. Look back in verse 11. 
in chapter 12, verse 11. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 11. I am become a fool in glory. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been co uh, commended of you. For in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. <coughs> Truly, verse 12. The signs of apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. They saw Paul perform miracles. They saw Paul do these mighty deeds in their, and they saw it with their own eyes and yet turned around and was seeking Paul to give them a proof that Christ was speaking through him. Boy, that's the way it is today. I want to tell you something. If people today don't believe that God sent Paul to them with the message of grace, something wrong. I've seen people turn from this message. I was telling several people, you think, of, you look around, and I, I see a lot of places where people's not at. Since we started Charity Bible Church, if everybody had stuck, it came through these doors and, ah, boy, it's great. Today, a lot of them is in a religious system, back in a religious system today. A lot of them has left. You know, if we had everybody that came through, we'd have to probably have to build a bigger auditorium. What happened? Somewhere down the road, they turned from the truth. Somewhere down the road, they quit considering Paul. Somewhere down the road, they co uh, quit following the Apostle Paul. The Lord sent Paul. Paul is your Apostle. He's the Apostle of the Gentiles. Now, I don't follow the man, Paul. And I've said it many times. Paul did things that I cannot and will not do. But he did it. In fact, look in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And notice what he says here. <clears throat> Maybe I told you wrong. I did. Maybe it's nine. It is. I'm sorry. Uh, chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter uh, nine. Verse 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew. Well, I'm not, I don't become a Jew to win a Jew. I'm not going to wear one of them little, watch them, whatever they are. And I'm not going to eat like they are and all that to win them. Paul did. He became a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law to them that are without law as without law, being not uh, without law to God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without law to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I uh, might by all means save some. And I do this for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. <coughs> and so he became all things to all men. I mean, when he was in the Jew in Acts there, he took a vow. He, he did not nothing to offend the Jews. Well, what about today? Well, there's no difference today. Look in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Notice what he says in verse 12. Romans 10 verse 12. 
For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord, or, uh, same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's no difference today in the dispensation of grace between a Jew and a Gentile. If a Jew wants to get saved today, then they get saved the same way as I got saved, by the gospel. So we don't show no partiality today and everything. We, we preach the gospel that was given to the Apostle Paul and that's the words of eternal life. And if people want to have eternal life, then they believe the gospel that was given to them through Paul. Jesus Christ sent Paul. You receive Paul, you receive Jesus Christ. You reject Paul, you reject Jesus Christ. And I hear them say, well, you follow Paul, I follow Jesus. You ever heard that? They're not following the Jesus that Paul knew. They're following the Jesus that was in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that was the Son of Man, that was to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and that Jesus back there wouldn't have gave you the time of day. Amen. He wouldn't have. The second thing I want you to see about Paul, turn over to 2, Corinth, uh, 2 Timothy, and look in 2 Timothy, Chapter 4. I'm sorry. Chapter 2. We'll get to chapter 4 later. We're to recognize who Jesus Christ sent to us with the message of the words of eternal life. We're also to consider. Notice what he says in verse 7. Consider what I say and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. The all things in the context has to do with the things that was given to Paul to give to you. It's the same things as I preached the other Sunday. Look back with me in case y'all forget. Uh, in 1 Corinthians, hang on to Timothy. Come back to 1 Corinthians in chapter 2. All things give you understanding and all things. He's not talking about all things, that you know everything about everybody and everything about the world and all that. I don't have an understanding in all things. I don't want to have an understanding in all. I don't want to know nothing about you. Sorry. I don't want you to know nothing about me either. I guarantee you there's things in all of our lives that we just soon nobody else know about. Amen? Just do that and you'll be all right. <laughs> Look in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2. Notice what he says in verse 9. As it is written, eyes have not seen, no ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And folks, that's where they normally stop. Do you know the things that God has prepared for you? You love the Lord, don't you? <laughs> well, y'all wouldn't just quit and go on home? You do love the Lord. Has he prepared some things for you? Do you know them? Look what he said. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God, he didn't leave you in the dark. But God hath revealed them them is the things. Them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. All the deep things of God, all the things that was revealed to Paul is to you. 
Do y'all get what he saw? Look down verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man? Save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. He knows the things of God. He knows all the things of God and the deep things of God. He revealed the things that God has prepared for you that love Him through Paul. And he wrote them down in 13 books. And that's the things that you can have an understanding about if you consider Paul. But if you don't consider Paul, and you consider John, then you're going to be looking for a mansion and streets of gold, and you're going to get disappointed. You're not getting the city. The city was prepared for that was not what's prepared for them that love Him. That was prepared for another group of people in this Bible. And that city, I mean, it has 12 foundations, and the names of the 12 apostles are on the. I mean, what? They got their signature on it. I mean, where's your name at? Where's Paul's name? He's not one of the twelve. Paul was not sent to the nation Israel. Paul was not sent with the kingdom message. Paul could not be saved under that kingdom message. Paul was a blasphemer. And that message could not, he could not have been forgiven under Peter's message. If he could, Jesus lied. Jesus said, Whosoever speaketh against the Holy uh, speaketh against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven in this world or the world to come, and the world to come was the kingdom. Paul did that, and he couldn't have got saved. He couldn't have got forgiveness. You know when Paul I was on the road to Damascus and the Lord appeared unto him and knocked him flat on the ground. Do you know what he was expecting? He was trembling. I imagine Paul was, this is it. Do you know what the Lord, if he should have killed him right there. This man had murdered people, had beat them and made them blaspheme and, and hauled them off and he was persecuting and making havoc of the church and he was slaughtering the disciples. He was to be dead. God should have killed him right there. No wonder he's the pattern of salvation by grace. Instead, because God could not save that man with Peter's message. And he saved him by his grace. And he got forgiveness of sins. And he revealed to him through revelations the thing that God has prepared for those that love Him. And He wrote them down in 13 books. You're not going to find your inheritance in the Old Testament. You're not going to find your inheritance in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You're not going to find your inheritance, Hebrews through Revelation. No, you're not. Where are you going to find it? through the old man that God sent unto you, Paul. And you need to read it. Consider what I say. Now look what he said. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. All things that's been revealed to him. Verse 8. Remember. 
You know, a lot of people forget. We have a short memory. You know, that's what politicians bank on. They can be in one scandal and they think, two more years to election. <laughs> American people, they forget all about that. They don't remember stuff anyway. And they're usually right, and they get reelected. How else could some of those devils get reelected every couple years? I mean, I mean, folks, I don't understand a lot of things, but I know we're in a we're in a bad situation. We're in a bad situation when we got. I ain't getting off on no political things. He said, remember, remember, remember what, Timothy? That Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to what Peter says? According to my gospel wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even under bonds, but the Word of God is not bound. He said, I'm suffering trouble for this gospel, but you remember that he was raised according to my gospel. Turn back to Tim, uh, Acts chapter 2. Hang on to Timothy. <coughs> Acts chapter 2. And notice what he says there. <clears throat> Peter preaching, Acts chapter 2, verse 30. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his what? Why did Peter say that God raised up Christ? To sit on the throne. Look in chapter 3. Why was that important? Chapter 3. He says in verse 18, But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus which before was preached unto you. In other words, the second coming of Christ, they get their sins blotted out, and he is on the throne. The kingdom, folks, he's the king, and he's God raised him up to sit upon the throne, to bring in the kingdom, and your sins, he's going to send him back, and your sins will be blotted out. Does that sound like what Paul preaches to you? And he tells Timothy, Timothy, remember that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Not Peter, James, and John, but my gospel. Why? He was raised according to Paul's gospel for your justification. The resurrection proved that God was satisfied with your sacrifice that He offered in your stead. Isn't that wonderful? We could not gain bring God anything. We could not please God in our flesh. There's nothing that we could offer to the Lord. I mean, you think you're perfect? Put your life up against the Lord Jesus Christ and see how perfect you are. We're not perfect, but God offered a sacrifice. That sacrifice was His Son. That His Son came and lived a perfect life. And He went to the cross and He died for all your sins. And God accepted that sacrifice in your stead and He's satisfied with it and your sins have been dealt with. Now believe Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that He died for you and you can have an eternal life and never doubt it no more. 
It's not based upon feeling. It's not based upon nothing you do, nothing you say. It's based upon you receiving what God already did for you. What a message. You, couldn't, you, you can't beat that. Who would want to? The greatest message, and Paul said, Timothy, remember. And look what he says there. It's according to my gospel. Paul's gospel that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and that God raised him the third day for our justification. That good news was only given to the Apostle Paul. Peter, he'd tell you this. Turn to Acts chapter 10. Hang on to Timothy. Acts chapter 10. You want to know what Tim, uh, Peter tell an old Gentile? Cornelius is a Gentile. You want to know what he tell you? If you run up on Peter. Verse 34, Acts 10, 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Sounds pretty good, don't it? Now you're right, Peter. You're right on it. Amen. Pete's preaching. But in every nation he that feareth him. And, uh oh. Worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Does Peter tell you you got to work righteous to be accepted with Paul? I mean with the Lord. Look in Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Folks, Peter's message and Paul's message don't go together. Titus chapter 3, verse 4. Titus 3, 4. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared not by works of righteousness which we have done. Whoop, 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 whoop. That's not what Peter said. He that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Paul said, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Now that renewing of the Holy Spirit and the washing of regeneration is not you. You understand that, don't you? That renewing of washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Regeneration means to change from a natural to a spiritual state. You'll notice what he said in verse 6, which he shed on us abundantly. What did he shed on you abundantly? The washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. You see, you didn't have the Holy Spirit before you got saved to be renewed again. The Holy Spirit, and he had to have it renewed. Think. Jesus Christ went to that cross. Jesus Christ, God said that he made him to be sin for us. Am I right or wrong? Did he become sin for us? Did he cry out on that cross, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Did God the Holy Spirit, God the Father, did they forsake the Lord? Absolutely. He died in that state. He was washed and regenerated 
and renewed of the Holy Spirit. When God was satisfied with the sacrifice, He regenerated Him and renewed the Holy Spirit in Him and He was resurrected and that power of renewal, that power of regeneration was shed on you. It was put to your account so that just as Christ came up, bless God, you came up with Him. That's why I say I couldn't go to hell if I wanted to, and I'm going to heaven whether I want to or not. It's a done deal. But the point is, Paul did say, it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy. Now look in chapter, you're there in, back in Timothy. Chapter 2. If people don't follow Paul, if they don't consider Paul, if they don't remember what Paul taught them, the things that God has prepared for them, then they'll be subverted. Notice in verse 14. Of these people, Things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. The word subvert is to turn upside down, ruin, overthrow, corrupt, destroy, ruin. This is what is happening to a lot of people. They don't consider Paul, and they go with words of no profit. Come down to verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word. So I know the babblings is preaching, the words of no profit is preaching and teaching, their word will do uh, eat as doeth a canker. That word canker is gan like a gangrene sore. It just keeps consuming the flesh and getting bigger and bigger. And Paul likens it a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And they go on. Notice come down to verse 17. Their word will eat as doeth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrew the faith of some. Now folks, they are subverting people. Uh, they're entangling them in bondage when you don't consider Paul and you don't follow Paul, you end up falling from grace and being ruined and being no good, and the Lord can't use you. Now the religious system might use you, and the people in that system might all put praise on you, but the Lord will not use you. And I don't care who they are, if they're not following the Lord through Paul, they're not following the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And I don't care how much they say, God told me this, God told me that. God ain't told nobody nothing that he didn't write down in a 1611 King James Bible. Everything that I need to know about God, about my inheritance, about my salvation, about words of eternal life, what to preach in the dispensation of grace is in this book, and it was wrote by Paul. Amen. All the Bible is for me, but it's not all to me. And the closer we get to the coming of the Lord and the end of the dispensation of grace, the more people's going to fall out from the Father and Paul. Why? It's too hard. I mean, it gets rough. Look in chapter there. 
Verse 10, he said there, I mean verse 9, 2 Timothy 2, 9, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer. That's what they call Paul. That's what they'll call you. You're a troublemaker. You're an evildoer. Stay away from him. I told you about that missionary that called. He was going to the mission fields. At least I think I told you about it. You know, I get, I'm getting to the age where I can't remember what I told what, when, where, why. So I just keep telling it. Jeannie will say, you done told me that. You done told me that. <laughs> but we there call. I like to come to your church. Okay, what? Well, I'm going to such and such place. What are you going to do when you get there? Well, I'm going to establish church, preach, win the loss. Same stuff that they go through. I said, well, where do you go? What church are you out of? He told me, church ain't far from here. I said, oh, you go over there where so-and-so pastors. He said, yeah. I said, well, yeah, set a date. I said, yeah, come over. Be glad to have you. Come over and tell that. Uh, this was on a Wednesday. I said, uh, tell your preacher that I said hello. He said, okay, I will. I'll see him tonight. I said, well, don't forget, tell him, tell him O'Brien said hello. He'll, he'll, he'll be glad to hear from me, I'm sure. He said, okay, I'll see him and I'll tell him I'm, I booked a date and going to go. I hung up the phone. I told June, I said, he'll be calling back. I won't have to worry about him. She said, you reckon? I said, nah. If he, does, if he tells his prayer. So one day I come in and June said, he called. He canceled. I ain't heard from him since. You know what he did? He went and told his pastor he was coming to my church. You know what he, that pastor did? Oh, no, you're not. Blah, 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 blah. Heard the story. He's a hyper dispensationalist. He's a, he's a Bullinger, right? He's a, I mean, he's bad. He's fall, he's cult, and all that stuff. I hate to break it to you folks, but, you know, they consider you as a cult when you say you go to my church. Is that why you never tell nobody where you go? <laughs> I'm just kidding you. I'm just that suffer as an evildoer. Why do we do that? For the gospel. We're following who the Lord sent to us. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? And the religious system hates it. But we we'll keep on. We don't want to be ruined. Then they spoil you. Let me now. My time's about gone. Looking back in Colossians. Now, when I say spoil you, I'm not talking about spoiling people like we spoil our grandchildren. We spoil our uh, youngins and stuff like that. That's not the spoil that I'm talking. Look in Colossians chapter 2. In verse 6. If ye therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. And by the way, how are you going to walk with him? In him. If you receive whomsoever I send, you receive who? Me. So... In other words, therefore, if you receive Christ Jesus, you receive Christ Jesus when you, you receive the message through Paul, and then you walk with him. He tells you how to walk. Therefore, as you, you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith. That faith is the one faith of Ephesians 4, and it has to do with the doctrine that was revealed to Paul. 
as ye have been taught. So you, it's, it's something you teach. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. You ought to be thankful for it. You ought to be thankful that you have a place that you can be taught the Word of God rightly divided. You ought to have a th be thankful that you can come together and hear the gospel and come together and hear what the Lord has done for you. I thank God for this place. And then he says there, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And folks, people today are spoiled. That word spoil there is taken in. It's like the spoil goes to the victor. It's the prize that they have. In other words, you go into battle and whoever won the battle, they take the spoil, they take it captive. And Satan is though he's the one that's battling for you. He wants to take you captive. Look back in 2 Timothy. And he uses vain deceits and philosophies and eloquent speeches and all of that stuff. Colossians chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 in verse 25 in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him, the devil, and his will, the devil's will. The devil's will for the members of the body of Christ is to take you captive and ensnare you and put you back into bondage and under the religious system. That's his system. Christ has made us free. Don't fall from grace. One last passage, and I'm going to let you go. In Galatians chapter 5, people that don't consider Paul, they don't remember Paul's message. They're taken captive. They're spoiled. They're subverted. They're ruined. They're not meat for the master's use anymore. God help me. I hope I never get that way. Galatians chapter 5, he said, Stand fast, verse 1, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. You could insert baptism there. If you depending on your baptism, Christ is no profit to you. For verily I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Now watch it. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Not losing your salvation, you're fallen from grace that you was in. We stand in this grace. <laughs> One other, I told you I lied, but sorry. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch it. Verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we what? Stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We stand in grace. We're at liberty in grace. 
But you turn from Paul and the message of grace and you go back under the law. Even though you're saved, you're fallen from that grace that you was in. You don't lose your salvation. But you can lose some of your reward that you would have got had you stayed with Paul. Stay with Paul. All right. Brother Richard.